good afternoon and welcome to the Contact a Family webinar on the Ofsted CQC local area inspections. Um, if there's a technical hitch, then please bear with us while we try to sort it out. And for those of you who are joining on a PC, laptop, tablet or smartphone, you should now be able to see this introductory slide. Um, as to timing and questions, because there's so many of, you, many of you on the webinar, it won't be practical for us to have verbal questions. If you've got questions you know you want to ask, then please enter them as soon as you can. And if you look at the bottom of this slide, you'll see the Go to Webinar toolbar. If you click on the questions, you can then type your question in and submit it, and the webinar administrator will receive it. We will um, answer as many questions as we can. We're going to pause sort of halfway through and also at the end, um, and we'll condense them if there's similar questions being asked. Um, if there's further questions that we don't manage to get covered in the time, they will be answered and posted on the Contact Family website along with the recording of this webinar and um, any further handouts. And at the end, there'll be a short questionnaire. Please stay on and, and complete that because it does help contact a family with, with future um, training events online. Okay, so to get started, to introduce myself, my name is Carol Kelsey and I'm from the Hertfordshire Parent Carer Forum. Hi, and I'm Fazila Ahmed from Enfield Our Voice Parent Carer Forum. Okay, so we're going to cover um, the various points on this slide of the inspection. Fazila and I have both previously done presentations about the experience and we've kind of combined this. I'm going to be doing the first, covering the first four points and then Fazila is going to be covering the second two points. Okay. So, the aims of the local area inspection. It's worth saying at this point that the local area doesn't just mean the local authority, it also means the health provision in your local area. So whatever area your forum covers, you will know how many CQCs that um, covers, in a CCG, sorry, in, in the area. And for some of you that'll be one, and for some of you that'll be more than one. So they will also be included in the inspection. So the basic three areas that they're looking at is they're assessing the effectiveness of the local area in identifying children and young people with SEND assessing and meeting their needs, and then they'll be looking at improving outcomes. And I think it would be fair to say from both of us, there's a lot of emphasis on um, people proving that they've got some outcome improvement. Okay, so the background, this just gives you some resources for the background of the inspection. Um, so it's part of the SEND accountability framework. There's a link there if you want to look at that. The inspections are intended to be both constructive as well as holding areas to account. So there's a key focus on working together to build on the strengths and taking forward any improvement areas. And there's a range of resources available to support ongoing improvement of services and there's links there at the bottom of the slide to those. So there are things like the local government informed SEND report, the EHCP journeys, etc. So, the local area inspection looks at all children with SEND, so it includes those on SEN support. It's not just about the children with EHCPs. They're looking at drawing out the key things that we've talked about, which is identifying, assessing, meeting, and outcomes. Um, they won't be looking at individual cases. A report is written in the form of a letter, but there isn't a grade given for local area. So that is different to the inspections from Ofsted that parents are more familiar with for individual schools and settings. There's a link there at the bottom of the slide to the inspection framework and the other um, documentation, so you can read that at your leisure. Um, and just a, a point of clarification as well in terms of who's been covered. It's not just CCGs, but if within a local area another borough is producing or de delivering a borough, they may also be assessed um, through parental feedback, etc. So that's just worth knowing because we haven't realised that. So in Enfield, Haringey was delivering our hearing impairment service, um, but also then Haringey's um, service was uh, commented on. Okay, thanks, Fizzy. That's worth knowing as well, taking into account. Okay, so pre-inspection. Um, we'll probably say this more than once, but 
get a, a plan of action ready for your forum as soon as possible. We can't emphasize that enough. You'll only have five working days notice. This is longer than Ofsted normally gives for school inspection, um, but they will phone the local, area, the local authority on a Monday and they'll come physically appear the following Monday. So first of all, make sure that your local authority knows who the con key contact people are in the forum and has up-to-date um, contact details for them. And as soon as you get the call or the email, put your plan into action. Don't wait. Things move really fast in the pre-inspection week and it will be quite an intensive experience over the fortnight of the forum. Um, so ensure that your key players in the forum know what to do. Keep your lines of communication open with the local authority so that you can receive um, inspection timetables, etc. promptly um, and not at the last minute. Also, the timing of the webinar will be agreed in that pre-inspection week and that can be either with or without your input. Um, ensure that the forum tells its own members on its own networks and other parent organisations as soon as possible that the inspection is coming. Um, Ofsted and CQC let the local authority know in that pre-inspection week which education and health setting, setting sorry, it will visit. And you should expect or ask for a forum rep to attend any pre-inspection meetings that the local area holds so that you have a chance to input um, at that earlier stage. And there will be a timetable produced of central meetings and visits to settings that's agreed with the local area, and you should expect to be given a copy of that. Yeah, and just to say as an example, um, Enfield had um, a couple of meetings in the week previous to the inspection week, and it was kind of a plan of action, what we're going to do, how do we want to manage this, etc. And we were part of the forum, we were part of those meetings, so it's really important if you've got that relationship that you could be at those sessions. And in Hertfordshire, we had been working on a, on a sort of self-evaluation with the local authority for a few weeks prior to the inspection. And again, we took part in that in, in the pre-inspection week. Okay, so what actually happens in the inspection week? Well, this is a sort of typical plan of the week. So on Monday and Tuesday, there's an initial briefing for key officers and rep from the forum. And then they have a series over those two days of topic-focused meetings. Um, that include representatives of professionals from the local area and you should expect that parent reps should be offered the chance to be included in these as well. Those topic meetings are about an hour long and they're fast paced and they're just looking at key themes. And there's a big focus in them on outcomes, asking people to show what they know the outcomes are for um, whatever strategy or plan of action you've got. We've listed there the topics that um, we know have been included so far in inspections. Um, I'm not going to read all those out, you can have a look at those, but actually that gives you a guide as to um, how to um, get suitable parent reps. And you should see that the involvement and participation one involves reps from parent reps from the forum or other um, parent groups uh, only. There won't be any um, local authority officers or CCG reps in that meeting. On the Wednesday and Thursday tend to be the days when they go out to visit education and health settings that they have chosen to visit themselves. On the Friday, the inspectors collate their views and findings from the week and give verbal feedback, usually in the afternoon, to the key officers from the local area. And um, you should expect for a parent rep to be involved in that as well. OK. so. They are inspecting the setting as part of the local area inspection and following key lines of inquiry. They're not making any judgments about the settings that they visit. So that you should make clear to parents and professionals should be aware of that as well. So when they get to the education settings, um, they meet with leaders and professionals, so maybe the head and the senko and other uh, deputy head perhaps, children and young people and parents of children and young people who are at that setting and they meet those group, those three groups separately. Um, the head teachers and senkos from the school won't be present um, in the parent meeting. So from the parent meeting we've put some examples of the type of questions that they've asked so far. Um, for example, do you have a copy of your child's plan? And by that they will mean if you're on SCN support, do you know what your plan is for your child have to be given a copy? 
um, and they'll be asking you to, uh, what difference have you noticed since the reforms came in place in September 2014. They will also go um, to offices and settings and look at some of the files and the HC plans. Um, and they will run the webinar for parents, which parents have to, like you have today, sign up in advance online for. Yeah, and just a note to say with those educating settings, um, the forums don't, we don't have any um, control on which parents are attending. It tends to be the um, settings themselves that invite their own parents. So again, it might be worthwhile just trying to network into schools there. Okay, so to summarise the parental engagement for the week, the forum reps um, will be involved in the pre-inspection and inspection topic week meetings, including the debrief at the end. Um, there's a standard inspection notification letter for parents that Ofsted have written, um, which is given out to the local authority. Hopefully they would give you a copy of it as well, and they would, the local authority should send it out as widely as it can. Um, to notify parents of the existence of the webinar. And as a forum, we have both also done that and extensively pushed to get parents involved. Um, the setting visits, as Fazila's just mentioned, um, it's up to the settings to select which parents um, they're going to invite along to attend that. Um, it is a good idea for you to identify if you've got any key parents in your forum whose children are attending those settings, or at least letting your parents your network no. Um, so we um, did have a school that um, didn't invite all of the parents were send. Um, so a couple of our key parents um, uh, spoke to the Senko on the head and said they wanted to come along and they were allowed to attend. Um, there's also the webinar as we've spoken about and also there's an opportunity for parents to email directly to Ofsted if they wish to and the details of that are in the letter that was sent around. Okay, so in summary for this first section, plan, prepare and ensure that you communicate effectively. You need to be sure that you've got an understanding of what the strengths and weaknesses of your area are and think of any examples of co-production that you could um, include. Try to be as balanced and objective as you can um, and perhaps agree on your four maybe document them um, if you've got capacity for that. But above all, ensure that you've got some evidence for what you're saying. It can't just be done on sort of well on hearsay. And so um, post inspection, make sure that you follow up both with your local area team and also with families and parents to let them know what's happened um, so that you can work together to continue to make improvements based on what um, comes out in the inspection letter and also continue to work with your peers in other forms in your area to share what you've learnt and tell them about the experience. Um, with the best laid plan, sometimes things don't go perhaps the way that we thought they might. So if you've got concerns during the inspection about how it's being conducted, then you should raise those with the lead HMI as soon as possible. The inspection team will only be small, four or five people, so it's easy to know who the lead HMI is. Um, talk to them about it. If it's not been possible to resolve concerns through this, then you can go through the formal complaint procedure, which is on Ofsted's website, and Ofsted will both will deal with that and investigate um, and, and act on behalf of CQC as well. Okay, so we've got some questions. Um, so the first one is, can we as a parent care forum submit written evidence to Ofsted during the inspection? Yes, you can. In Hertfordshire, we chose to do that. So we had produced a document, which you can get from the link in the document with the handout that we've got to go with this. Um, just as a guide, obviously your things would be different. So we did, we put all that in. We put things for improvement as well as things that had gone well. Um, inspectors were happy to take that. They wanted it electronically and we also gave them paper copies when we met them. Yes, yeah, snap for Enfield. And obviously, uh, given how busy parents are, they may not be able to get to, to attend the webinar. Um, they may not be able to get to the meetings. But um, again, via the email, you can give them written comments and documentation. Um, what they did, what they were quite clear on is they're not, whilst they want to hear families' experiences, they didn't want personal, individual 
situations. Again, it's quite strategic, key themes, um, as opposed to you know an unhappy parent kind of um, uh, talking about their personal experience. However, they are interested in in those. Um, and I would say that we'll talk a little bit later on about it does raise the profile and interest of parents in the forum. So be prepared that you might have more email traffic, more more. Um, social media traffic and things to deal with. Um, we did have um, a number of parents contacting us wanting, asking specifically for them to come along because they wanted to tell inspectors their story. And we had to manage that and explain to them that that wasn't really what the inspection's about. Um, so do sort of um, try and think about gearing up for that. Um, so another question here is, what have the presenters found is the best way to ask parents questions about their experiences? Have they found questionnaires useful? Alternatively, what else would they suggest? So I think um, we'll probably both have something to say about this, but we consciously chose to do an online survey in Hertfordshire because it's physically very large and has a big population. And we knew that lots of parents wouldn't be free or available to, do, to take part in the webinar. Um, and we had reservations um, about how effective the webinar is at getting a really good picture of what's going on. So we produced an online survey, um, which you can download from our um, website. You'll have the link to it later. Um, and you can use, we're happy for you to use those questions um, as a guide. So we base them on the main um, objectives of the inspection. So the questions are, are around that and ask people to sort of grade, for example, one of the questions around how well do you think your child's needs have been assessed by education, social care and health, and then you grade accordingly. Um, because we felt that was easier for a wider range of parents to access it um, and give in their views. And some would find taking part in the webinar more difficult. Um, I mean, other evidence would be things like if you hold meetings, do you keep notes of issues that parents raise with you? Um, have you done um, events where parents have been able to, um, in groups, you know, uh, put up, say, on flip charts what, what their experience is or what they think needs doing? So it's using what you've already got that you've collected since September 2014, yeah. or most recently, because obviously you could be not inspected until 2019, so it wouldn't be worth going back to 2014. So it's what's cut reasonably current, current in the last mm -hmm. year or two. Yeah, I mean, uh, Enfield were in a similar situation. I mean, we'd, we'd done some online surveys, actually, um, as the uh, legislation was kicking in, so kind of September 14 through to spring of 15, but actually, we felt that was almost too early information and things had moved on quite um, a lot since then. So we actually chose not to use that information. But back to Carol's point, we did have a lot of information from previous meetings, network meetings. Um, so the, inf the information we were able to produce was um, backed up. But just to allay people's fears, I don't know that they want massive reports and documents because, again, <laughs> I, I, rang, I rang up. Um, the HMI and was asking, you know, what evidence are they looking for? And, um, you know, as long as you've got um, some cohesive, you know, way of writing information down, I don't think they're looking for full out reports, so don't panic. But if you can say you went to a meeting, you've held a meeting, there were 15 parents there, you know, of those seven said X, Y, Z, that in, in itself is, is quite good evidence to, to provide. I mean, I would caution against producing a 25-page report. Yeah, exactly. We have, I think, ours is four sides, <laughs> because I know in reality, we all have difficulty reading everything exactly. that's sent to us, and I think the longer you make it, the less likely people are yeah. to read it. So I would keep it short, Simple. and also we, you'll see if you go on through the link, how we divided it up into the topic areas and stuck to it like that and, and kept it succinct. Um, the other thing that Enfield did is, as a management team, we did a conference call because the timing was so tight and we couldn't physically get together before um, the week of the inspection. Um, but we then talked about the key themes and looked at the evidence that we had, the, the meetings that we'd attended, um, and kind of pulled up uh, key themes, key messages. And actually, we did detail that down, and that was just two sides. And that was useful information for us to get our thoughts together. 
um, but also we were able to share that with the inspectors and they found that quite useful. Yeah, we, also, we were, had, luckily had had our steering group meeting the, on the night that the inspector was announced, so, so we were able to get together and just thrash out a few things um, because we were getting together anyway, but I think conference calling and things, you know, FaceTime, that type of stuff is, is really useful these days for you to be able to quickly react without having to rush um, driving all over the place or um, travelling. Um, okay, so the, another question, do the LA have to inform the parents forum as soon as they are notified of the inspection? I don't think there's any legal requirement, however, there's an expectation that they will do that. Um, if that doesn't happen um, and you find out another way, um, then maybe that would be something you might want to point out because that might be a, you know, an in indication to inspectors during the week of how how well they're working with your forum. Yeah, I mean in Enfield um, they contacted the local area first, the, the, the lead centre was Janet, um, and actually they then ask the, they asked the local authority our details and then contacted um, ourselves. And I would say, you know, it, it's helpful to perhaps give the local authority two or three different names and contact details because I just happened to be around <laughs> on that Monday morning and actually that was a real, um, you know, rarity. So uh, it was great timing for us, but I thought that could have backfired against us slightly. Um, so I would definitely make sure that you've got two or three people that if they can't get hold of one person, they can speak to another. It happened slightly differently. We weren't contacted directly by OFSED, but only by the local authority. But the expectation from OFSED CQC is that they will contact the forum and let you know. So we'd already had two contacts with current um, information to them because we'd they'd made sure they had that in the pre-inspection week uh, before when we were doing the CEF early before the inspection was announced. Okay. Right, we've come to the end of question section, so we're going to move on and Fazil is going to um, lead now. Okay, so this in, in this section we're going to talk about a little bit about the inspection results and post inspection, but also then look at you know reflections of, of how things progressed and any top tips that um, we could think of that we could share that you might find helpful. So in terms of the happens, uh, say after the inspection, is um, it goes very quiet for quite a number of weeks because the inspectors have to produce a quite detailed letter. It goes through legal, etc. There's a number of stages it needs to go through before they can produce it in a draft format. That's then forwarded to the local um, authority, local area. Um, and at that stage, certainly ourselves in Hertfordshire, we weren't involved in that stage, so it's interesting to see whether that will change or not. But it goes to the local authority for them to read and comment on, so they can make their comments, they send that back to the um, inspectors, and then it's published. So we've produced here the link to those documents. I think there are about seven or eight um, published outcome letters uh, currently up there, and they're quite interesting. If you haven't had a chance to read, do have a look. Um, yeah, it's interesting reading. They're not terribly long, so don't think that it's the, it's not 32 pages. I think Hotchies is probably the longest of the ones that have been published so far. I think it's nine sides. So don't be put off. They aren't huge, massive tomes that you have to read. No, you can flick through them quite easily. Although I'd, I'd say for parents, if you get yours, I would suggest that you perhaps summarise them, because I'm not sure how many parents would actually want to go and read through all of the detail of their inspection letter. So um, the key thing is then the so what, what do you do with those letters? So ideally you would be working with the local area, local authority, health, etc. Um, and setting, working through what does, what does a letter mean? What are the areas for development? What are the strengths? Um, and ideally that some kind of action plan, um, improvement plan is developed. And that you're kind of, I guess, rag rating and prioritizing because I'm guessing there'll be a number of points on most of our letters um, and therefore I think it's really important, it gives you probably a bit of focus to think of what are your, what are your key battles, what do you think are really important that you would want to focus on and you want the LA to focus on as opposed to maybe um, you know things that have been highlighted but you don't feel as, has as much impact on your families. Um, the other thing is it's important to then work and in, inform your families 
um, and let them know the results and what the next steps are so that they are continually engaged because all too often I think parents are giving lots of feedback on things it goes really quiet and then you never hear anything again and you think, well, what was that about? So I do think it's important to feedback to your families and parents however you would normally communicate with them. Um, and encourage the local authority to, to do so as well, I think, on what if they've if they have um, put things up on the local offer or they have a newsletter or something that they can include something about that. But hopefully they would agree the content um, with you. And equally the schools, because again, parents may have been inputting to the educational um, settings, meetings, and, and they should be informed as well. So encourage the schools to, to do so. And what we're doing currently is sharing the learning with other local authorities, local areas, and parent care forums. So the webinar is an example of this. Um, if any of you are listening and you're based in London, um, on the 25th of September, I think an email's come out from Kmore where the London um, boroughs are getting together to hear from Enfield around their findings of the local area inspections and for parent care forums, myself will be there as well. Um, and Hertfordshire is in the eastern region and um, we used um, one of our eastern region meetings to run an event um, for um, key people in the 11 forums in our area so they were able to come along and hear directly from us about the experience and, and some, some of the slides are, you know, are based on, on that presentation we gave. Yeah, and equally, obviously, use those opportunities at your regional cluster meetings. London did the same with North London, and I know um, the reps, Mary and Kay, were able to um, present at their various meetings. So I think we're all sharing the love, sharing the learning. So reflections on the inspection. I think what was really positive from our perspective was Ofsted CQC did listen. They were very receptive to us. Uh, they were using kind of steers and points from our perspective as lines of inquiry, so that means that they were then using that to follow up with the local areas and professionals to validate um, and sense check. Um, I didn't feel that, that that was a positive that they were judging us, and I think that's that's really important. So, you know, they were listening to us, getting a sense, but we didn't get a sense that they were thinking, you know, um, yeah, making any judgments on that. It's just quite a relief from our perspective. I think, Carol, you wanted to say something? Yes, I think when we were in the topic meetings um, in the early couple of days of the inspection, um, when we had parent reps in there, um, inspectors were ensuring that those parent reps had um, an opportunity to speak in each of those meetings. All of the, rep, the reps we used um, made that clear. So that they didn't allow, um, obviously there would be more professionals than the parents there, but they didn't allow a scenario where they all got to say what they thought and the parents didn't. So they did make a point of ensuring that parents had an opportunity to speak. Thanks, Carol. Um, we talked about co-production and I think both of our inspections, but interestingly, I don't know that it was a key feature. Um, so whether that's something to, to focus on, whether that's going forward, um, but they clearly talked to us about the local offer and co-production, obviously, because that's the duty, um, and that was important. And just as a, as a reminder, if you weren't aware, before they come in to the local area, on the Sunday, they actually go through the area local offer, and they'll spend a couple of hours at least going through that. So they already have a good feel when they come in on the Monday morning. Um, so just so that you know, that's quite important to get the local offer right, and if it's not, they will pick up on that straight away. And they'll also have done quite a bit of research about the local area from data and evidence, um, so they will have looked at other inspections that have gone on um, recently for that local area as well. Yeah. I think the key thing is, though, that because it's such a massive area to cover, whether it's physically or just in terms of health, social care, education, you know, children's centres through to health clinics, they're really touching on a lot of these areas and I'm not sure how much depth they're able to, to get to. So they're kind of getting a, a very broad sense of lots of areas but not in a huge amount of detail. That may be positive, may be negative. Um, whether they can do everything in a week, I mean, that's the time they've got. I mean, it's going to vary, but just so that you know, you know, some pe some areas they might be dipping in and out of. Um, the other thing that was quite interesting was that forum reps weren't invited to the health meetings. 
and I'm not sure in Enfield that there were many parents, if any, that went to the um, help the specific CQC meetings. And we have flagged that up. We were able to provide feedback to the DfE following the inspection um, and provide a lot of feedback and thoughts around the inspection so that they hopefully can use that going forward. So I would like to see that, you know, from a health perspective, there's more engagement and co-production. I don't know, Carol, your thoughts on that? Yes, we didn't, um, we weren't, we weren't um, invited to any of the health settings that they visited and we haven't had any feedback from parents um, who are in our network to say that they would happen to be there when they arrived. Um, so I do think that that is something that would, we would hope to see might change over time. Okay. So the other thing that's interesting, there's lots of nine o'clock meetings um, and that the timings are not so great in terms of getting parental engagement and also the topic sessions, they were so varied, which we know, you know, you've got post-16, early years, health, education, um, and that, that's quite a challenge to try and get parental representation across all of those four days. Um, the webinar, you know, the timing, seven, eight o'clock at night, could suit some, not necessarily others. Um, the letter of invitation was very complicated and was clearly DFE written. And we've kind of Ofsted had a bit written, of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ofsted written. So we had a, a kind of bit of a joke thinking we could co-produce and support them to work to produce a, a, a much simpler parent-friendly letter. Um, the webinar in particular on a on a later slide. So I think that needs some particular attention. Um, but in Hertfordshire, you'd already picked up the fact that uh, Carol had said that the webinar might not be as engaging for many parents, so they did their own online survey, which I know you've already you've commented on. Yeah, and you can see the link there. The pink is the title of it, so you can go onto that page and download the whole thing with all the results in, um, and feel free to use it as a, a basis if you wanted to do an online survey. Um, we're not saying it's perfect, we had to do it get it together in 48 hours, so there's definitely room for improvement, but it does stick to the main themes and topics of the inspection, so don't make it, I would suggest don't make it too detailed, and also don't have um, a free text box where people can write whatever they want to, because you'll get um, perhaps a lot loads of information there that isn't really terribly helpful, so that's, you'll see we haven't really allowed us, um, parents to be able to tell us everything that's ever happened to them. And I think that's a good reminder, and we, and we put that on our emails, that they are looking at services plans, send support plans from September 2014. So if some, you know, if parents have had a really difficult time um, in 2013, that's not what they're looking at. They're looking at what's happening now. So it's really important to, to have parents understand that. So some top tips, preparation, 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 and I can't say that enough, and I, ironically, I remember being in a meeting on the Friday before, oblivious to any call that we were going to get on the Monday, saying to Kay Moore, oh gosh, we really need to start planning for any potential Ofsted inspection, because I guess we're going to get hit quite quickly, and then lo and behold, on the Monday, um, it happens, so yeah, so try and avoid the panic, the best thing is to be thinking about it now, and you know, the, the, coming along to this session, looking at the slides, talking to other forums, um, is, is going to really help you, I think, get yourself um, organized and in place. So dedicate time and effort now, because you will reap the rewards, um, because it, it will show, it will show, Offset will, will see that. Um, be aware of the time pressures and cost implications for the forums, that was quite interesting, because of course it's a lot of parental time coming to attending meetings, planning, organizing, um, again, I was lucky that I happened to have on that week, um, but I'm sure the same for Carol, coordinating, making sure that we were linking in with other parent forums, organizations, making sure the timetable is okay, that parents knew where they were going, when they were going, checking that they'd arrived, <laughs> um, you know, there's, there is a lot of work for, for, for forums to do, and, you know, I just think overall, we were in a good, good place because we're a management team of eight who are proactive. I think Carol, hadn't there's, there's quite a few in your... Yes, yeah, so we've got a yeah, we've got a steering group of seven and we've got a wider group of parent reps. So not, yeah. it, there were other parents that took part. Exactly. Um, so same, we network, we have forums, um, other forums that we work very closely with, so it wasn't just 
our own individual forum, but we were networking with other forums, other um, like hearing impairment, e autism, etc., visual impairment. Um, so we got a really good broad range. So the one flag I would say to to some of the forums, I know Enfield was in that position just a few years ago, where it might be one or two, three key people on the management team kind of holding it all together. Um, the, the biggest you know, top tip I can say is think about how you widen that network so that you can really engage and fully support in any um, inspection because if you were just two or three parents I think you would really struggle, it would be quite a tough, tough ask for you to do all of this. Um, I think Carol's mentioned here about possibly having local media attention. We, d we didn't get anything I don't think but... We, we have had, yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. Um, so, you know, we had contact from from just from um, local press um, asking us um, about um, about the results and for comments on that and all I would say is just think very carefully about what you say um, and um, try to be as balanced as possible and positive about um, working with um, the local area to put improvements in etc. So we've already mentioned about the local authority making sure they've got correct contact details and definitely more than one or two of you in the forum. Um, and ensure that in the pre-inspection week, I think I mentioned that right at the beginning, make sure that you're already involved as a forum so you know what's happening, you know what the timetable is going to look like. Um, for Enfield, we'd realised very quickly, thankfully, that they timetabled our kind of parental uh, meeting when most of us couldn't make it which is really helpful. So I had to go back and said, actually, this is, our, this is when most of our parents can do it. Can we swap from this meeting to this meeting? And actually, they were really flexible and it was fine. Um, but we were only able to do that because I had sight of the timetable very early on. Okay. So in terms of attending the meetings now, ensure that you do have suitable parent reps. And that might sound, sound quite simplistic, but if you look at those number of topics um, that the meetings cover, their early years through to post-16, you would like to think that parents there have some knowledge and are going to be knowledgeable when they are at that meeting. Um, so that in itself can be quite a challenge, I think. You need to really think carefully um, about who your parents would be. Um, they need to think strategically, and it wouldn't, clearly we always know that, it's not about the individual parent. Um, but know what they're going to say. So we talked about key messages before, um, making sure they were comfortable. I had a chat with some of the parents beforehand to make sure that they were okay about what to say. Did they want um, any support? Um, because it's really important that you've, you take the opportunity to say what you need to say, but that you do have evidence that say we're not winging it, making it up. You can back it up when Ofsted say, well, how do you know that? Because they will ask that. And they say it doesn't have to be massive reports, don't panic, but you know, you're already having your network meetings, you're already meeting and talking with parents, it's just really collating that and making it make sense, um, so that you can say, so for example, there is something that was called out in Enfield um, about um, schools not being particularly um, helpful when uh, parents were asking about secondary schools and looking at their next steps for their children in primary, and officer did say, well how do you know that? Um, but we'd actually had a number of meetings, we'd had a number, number of parents saying that, and we could actually say, and I just gave an example of, you know, we had one network meeting, we had 20 parents, and of those 14 or 15 all commented that they'd had the same experience, almost with the same phrasing and wording. And immediately, you know, you could see they were like, oh, okay, and they just made a note. So it wasn't like I had a massive report, but that was um, information there. Um, just to let you know, the local authority have come back to us now and asked us for further evidence. So we are now going to run a proper survey um, and feedback officially to them um, around those results. I think we would also say that when we produced this four-page um, written report for the inspectors, there was nothing in it that we hadn't raised with the local authority. That's a good point. Um, at other times. So there was the... It wasn't that we were trying to ambush the local authority with a whole load of things we've been keeping to ourselves. So we hadn't. So I wouldn't, would strongly advise that you don't do that, that what you do is make sure that you're not putting anything in there that you haven't already discussed with the, with the local authority. That's a really good point, Carol. And all the way through, in fact, prior, because we, you know, Enfield knew we were going to be on the, 
<laughs> on the agenda at some point. I had really been flagging um, to the local authority. These are the points, you know, uh, quite openly. We shared the information, and actually, following meetings. Uh, they have keeping in touch sessions in the morning with the local authority of Stead and CQC and the previous day I would get a, a view from the families and what had been said and I was quite open with the local authority saying these are the key themes, this is what we're saying so you know, so they were able to think about their response. So it, you know, it's collaborative as much as it can be but still being open and honest and transparent with, you know, with the points that you just have to make. And we'd also included um, uh, positive things that we've uh, had gone on and examples of things that we felt have been really co-produced as well. And I think that's a real key important when you're at these meetings that you whilst you're there to you know say things as they are absolutely it's recognizing what is going well are the positives when we produced our kind of key themes document for um, Ofsted CQC it kicked off with things that are going well things that have been co-produced well, and then key challenges. So, you know, the themes that we're all very used to. And I think that's really important when you're looking at attending the meetings, that parents have to be confident and assertive. They've got to be able to hold their own in what could be, what you know, a meeting where there's one parent potentially and 13, 15 professionals. So, again, it is about being positive and not undermining the local authority while you're in those meetings, but equally being able to say what you need to say in a constructive uh, manner. I mean, one of the tips that um, the local authorities are not here, but um, I had to do something very impromptu the other day. I was asked to comment about the inspection when there were local authority officers there from different areas. And what I said to them was strongly, do not put too many professionals into these topic meetings because it actually makes it quite difficult for the inspectors when they've got an hour to talk about early years. If you've got 10 professionals in the meeting, you actually don't cover as much as if you reduce it down. So it's good practice to talk in advance with your local authority about how and make that suggestion to them that they don't overload it because actually 60 minutes isn't very long um, to cover a topic area. Um, it's certainly fast paced and you'll yeah. find that again it's really they're in, they're asking their questions and you need to respond fairly promptly and move on. So it's really important for parents to know that. Make sure they've got notes with them so that they don't forget things. Um, they know what to say. They can make notes of the meetings and feedback to yourself so that you know what's going on. And equally, we've been in situations where we've had a few notes where actually the parent just didn't get a chance to say everything that they did want to do, but they had it written down, so they just handed it to the inspector. Okay, so you'll keep getting back to this key theme of communication in terms of you know how you can prepare. It is all about communication. So, you know, Hopefully you've got good relationships already with your local authorities, but do work with them in advance with health as well um, in preparation. And I think the fact that we'll be doing these sessions and that the local local authorities will be hopefully communicating with each other, it will give you some leverage to say that we're all sharing these lessons learned and we're all saying the same thing. Um, tell your forum members and reps straight away. Don't waste any time. It's literally as they're on the phone to you. I was getting on, and I was actually using WhatsApp, getting all my parents on board. That was much quicker than trying to email when you don't know when people will actually be picking up their emails. Um, so we've said make sure they take notes, report back, and communicate widely with other parent groups. Don't try and do this all on your own because, again, it is a, about local area. So already know who your key groups are, who your key contacts are within those groups and network with them. Um, and make sure that you've got all lines of methods of communication covered, whether it's email, Twitter, Facebook, WhatsApp, you know, however you're communicating, use all of those methods. At one point for our webinar, we got Ipsy involved, which is quite interesting because they've gone onto our Facebook page and we kind of had to push back and said, this is an Enfield local area inspection. And at the beginning of our webinar, we had to, back, to be clear about who um, was entitled to be on the session. Otherwise, that could have skewed our figures um, quite considerably. Um, and do ensure that there's follow-up post inspection when the report's published so that the you know forum parents and other groups actually know what, what's happening. So the webinar, we thought this needed a slide all on its own. Um, as you all know, we're all just getting used to webinars and if you're part of the forum, you'll, you'll be more familiar with that, but most of our parents are not. So it's not the best way for them to communicate. 
Um, so do think about how you're preparing parents who might want to participate so that they fully understand what to expect and how to, how to prepare. So we've just detailed some points here about how it's going to be, but it's it's similar to as you're being engaged now. You can't be seen, so that's that. Lots of people were quite nervous about that. Um, so there's no cameras. Uh, it does take 35, 40 minutes. Um, the other thing to note is that probably again as you did here, when you register, you have to give your details, and a number of our families were quite concerned about that. But if you can assure them that actually it's anonymized. Um, once the information is collated. So they, nobody knows who's participated other than Ofsted CQC. They will be asked a number of questions. I think there were three, four, five key questions and then they basically kind of use their keyboard to vote and say yes and then it's a, a, a number of percentages in terms of how the response has been collated. And you are able to give your own examples, you're able to log concerns because you've got an opportunity to do that um, as part of the webinar. Um, so again, key message is really to help um, parents prepare. And actually, you could use this webinar maybe as a as a practice session, and and, and people can see what's happening and uh, what to expect. Okay, should we move on now, Carol, to the next slide? Yeah. Sorry, we're back to questions now, and we've got a number of questions, um, to work our way through. Um, the first one's an easy one. Um, can we see your plan of action? <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> because we hadn't really got a formalized one. Um, ours was um, sort of three points um, in an email. It, that's as far as we've got in advance. We've had discussions, so I'm sorry, but I don't have a fancy plan of action to share. So what, the, 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 what I did was I took the um, potential dates and timings of the Ofsted inspection. I had a list of, of the parent groups and the parents that uh, were in, potentially involved and I knew who could do what. You kind of want to plot them to say who's got post-16 experience, who's got early years experience, look at the timings of the sessions and then um, it's in some ways that was more of a timetabling ex exercise. In terms of um, plan of actions and tasks, it, it would be get your evidence together, however that is, whatever that looks like. Get your lines of communication agreed. How are you going to communicate? Um, who's going to lead? Who's going to run with this with the local authority? Your key points of contacts. Um, and then look at post-inspection as well. So how do you communicate the findings and follow up? So to be fair, you know, I've done some of that, whether, I mean, it's a good question, whether we maybe try and mock something up for going forward, um, I can discuss that with contact a family, if that would help. Yeah. Um, I mean, our sort of three points were about communicating out immediately, um, and we had made a decision that we were going to produce um, an online survey. Um, you can set that up now, even if you don't need it for four years, you can just adjust it over time. You can put it on there as, as a draft survey. You can do that straight away. Um, we tightened up some of our communication lines in advance. Um, and we had also, also had, a, had a grip on, so you could already look at those topic areas and work out what your key themes, what's working well, what you think needs improving in each of those topic areas. You could draft that out now and just sort of update it as and when you need to, um, so you've got something ready. Um, okay, how many, many, many meetings will there be that require parent reps? Um, the answer to that is however many topic groups are listed, plus the opening meeting, the closing meeting, and then the settings, I imagine that will vary according to the size of your local area. So if you're a very small local authority, there simply won't be as many schools, but they will go to, say, a primary, secondary, an early years setting, an FE college, special school, um, special schools. So um, depending on on how big your local area is and how many, you know, um, geographically big as well, because obviously they have to do, go to visit realistically that they can travel to. 
And remember, I don't know whether going forward they're going to change with health, whether running concurrently is, is the educational meetings and the educational settings they were running their health meetings and going to health clinics, etc. So, but as we said before, we don't, we don't, we didn't get involved in that because um, no. we, we weren't asked to go along. But it'd be nice to know that going forward they might take that on board. Okay, so the next question is, what responses have you, the Parent Care Forum, made following the response letter, i.e. have you identified work areas or development opportunities? Has it improved relationships with partners where there were challenges? That's multiple questions there. Right, okay, so I think if we start on what, what have we done, what responses have we made since um, following the response letter? Um, we immediately um, went back to the local authority and said um, we would like to be involved in any action plans that come out of the inspection letter um, and received an, a reassuring um, email from the Children's Services Director to say that we would be included in, in, every, um, in all things going forward. Um, and we are currently working um, on an improvement plan, we've identified the key points, etc. And we've had co a couple of co-production events um, for that so far. Has it improved relationships? Um, I think initially um, they have got time; to, they need time in the local authority to digest what's being said. Um, you, you know, both the forum and the local local area may or may not agree with with some of what the inspection letter says. Um, however, having had a bit of time to consider it, yes, um, we're using that as a basis to try and move forward even further to working better together. So from an Enfield perspective, um, we, in terms of relationships, I probably work backwards. I, th I guess it's similar. There's probably a number of people now who are more engaged, I would say, which is positive. Um, and they are genuinely looking at the actions. We've kind of agreed the action plans and prioritised those together. So that again, that's been really important. And we've taken some actions as part of the local area planning to help support um, improvement. So just one example, I think I mentioned that was the um, the, the concern around schools not being welcoming to um, parents who are looking at secondary schools. So there's two or three things there that we've got now on our to-do list, on our own action plan that we need to, you know, we're already building in. But equally, you know, there, there will still be things that are very important to you, and I don't think you should be sidetracked either. So this is a really good focus to move forward with, but don't let that sidetrack you from what you're currently doing. So, for example, I know a lot of us got issues with transport. That's still a massive issue um, for us in the forum, and we, we're going to keep focused on transport because it's really important. Um, and we're not going to be sidetracked into doing other things um, quite yet. Hopefully that answers the question. Right, we've got two, next, more, two more questions. Quite long questions, it looks like, from here. So, regarding the parental meeting focus group, how do you suggest supporting parents to take a strategic view when they can only relate to personal experiences? I'm presuming that you're talking about this, in re you mean this in re terms of parents who are being representative at the topic group meetings. Um, for us, some of that is about, one, um, who we chose to attend those meetings, that as a forum you need to choose the most appropriate person um, who you think is able to, to think in that broader sense. But also, on a second point, was we do run some training sessions for parent reps within the forum that address some of those things about how to think bigger than just what's happened to you personally. Yeah, similar I found is that I make sure I make sure I make sure that our parents do attend a number of network meetings and are being engaged with whether it's surveys or on networking with other parents. So it's actually much easier to see a broader perspective because they're dealing with lots of other parents on a regular basis. And I think that clearly widens out then their own perspective more naturally. So we only sent parents into those um, topic meetings who had done other representational um, work for us so that they had a, an idea from that. So um, 
Moving on to the next question. We've recently changed our chair and we know we're engaging more with parents than we were. Unfortunately, I don't know what history we have, but we are moving forward in a positive way. Can we focus on how we are now and how we are moving forward for a better future? Absolutely, yes. 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 It's definitely. You don't feel that someone's going to pressure you into saying, oh, well, what happened a year ago? That won't happen. You need to focus on what you know here and now so you can have a look at those topics meetings and, and see where you are now. Um, so yes, um, you don't need to worry about what, what may have happened in the past. Okay, we've, we've had a few, few more questions come in, but we're not going to have um, a chance to go through all of them, I'm afraid. Um, so let's just take the last question again around webinars, because it's quite a, a topic that's come up. Okay, we have never used a webinar for our forum. Is it something we have to do? Um, as an individual forum, you don't need to use webinars in the way you run your forum. Obviously, um, Contact Family has adopted this webinar training thing because it's much more practical than trying to get 152 forums from all over England to venues to do um, the training. Um, Ofsted, are con as far as we're aware, Ofsted CQC are still continuing to use the webinar as a way of gathering parent view in the um, local area as part of their parent engagement strategy. Um, yeah, so I do... I do add because we had reservations about how effective that would be, that is why in Hertfordshire we did our own on online survey. So there's nothing to stop you doing that yourselves in your area? I think absolutely if you've got other ways of communicating use that but I got the sense from CQC Ofsted that, that that's the way they're going to continue to communicate but they might add in their own survey monkey or kind of webinar, uh, uh, online survey questionnaire. We're running out of time so there are a few more questions but I think there's a, a couple of quick questions we can answer. How many parents are expected in each topic meeting? There's no expectation of, of you know numbers I obviously one minimally um, and I think it's depending on you, your size, whether one's enough or whether a couple would be helpful because they feel like there's moral support. Where we had the main meeting where it was just parents, um, there was about 12, 13 um, but again that would depend on the size of your area, how many parents you've got engaged, you know Hertfordshire's massive so so I think it depends. So don't get too, too hung up on that but I think minimally one um, would be helpful. And don't feel you've got to use a different parent in each topic meeting. We didn't, so some people um, uh, got involved in um, several topics because that was their particular um, area of knowledge. Um, and so, uh, but we would say if you can have two parents then it is really helpful because then it's easier to take notes and to think about what you're doing and to support one another. I, th I do think it helps to have different parents if, if they have different knowledge um, and they're experts in different fields. Um, okay, I think um, the last question is a really good one, so I think it's really important we ask that. I'm sorry if uh, we're not able to read out all of your questions, guys. What we will be doing, as we'll mention that later, is we'll um, get that posted um, up so that we will answer them in black and white, but it would just not be um, at this session. So the last question is, to what extent is joint working between different agencies, health, social care and education reported on? Health engagement in particular is a common issue. So I mean that's one of their key drivers, they look at collaboration, they look at the, you know that key duty, are, are the different agencies genuinely working together? They follow that line of inquiry, so they'll ask a question within social care, then they'll follow it up with the health clinics and the health meetings, and they'll even go down to individual you know, health visitors, etc. Um, so I think that will be quite apparent if it's not working, they will comment on that. Um, Carol, any last thoughts on that? Um, no, I just back up um, uh, what you said there, Fazila. Um, I think it's probably we'll need to move on. So, oh, oh, I've just lost you. Sorry. Too much, sorry. So, just to finally, just wanted to say thank you for attending all of you. I know how busy you guys are, so thank you for attending and actually listening to us. Hopefully you found it useful and informative. Um, there will be a recording, as it says on here, um, in the next couple of weeks, and you're going to get an email confirming that. So, hopefully you can get other um, parents, other management members, maybe who weren't able to attend today to listen if you think it was useful. Um, but also we'd want to take an opportunity to thank um, Gareth Ashcroft from the DfE 
because as ever, ever we all, everything we do, it's been co-produced. So obviously it was myself, Carol, um, contact to family feedback as well as Gareth. So thank you for his time um, and for contact to family supporting this webinar. So at the end of this session, you will get now a short questionnaire that's going to launch. And really, it would be really helpful for you to take time to complete that because obviously it does help um, with them, um, with CAF kind of planning training events um, on other topics that you might find interesting. Um, and say, so, yeah, hopefully you'll get an email of the recording that you'll have in a couple of weeks so that you can listen to us all over again if you'd like to. <laughs> so thanks for listening and thank you from me as well. Goodbye.